Finally, on September 14th, we have the NHS Contact Tracing app, which is launched after its fair amount of delays and controversy. In this video, we're going to take a look at what it does, how it does it, its security, privacy, and a whole lot more. So let's crack on. Available both on iOS and Android, it's just a question of downloading it from your app store, providing your phone can support it. I don't have access to any Android phones, so in this video, I'm going to be concentrating firmly on iOS. For Apple users, your phone must have at least iOS 13.5, released in May 2020, whilst Android users will at least need Android 6.0, released in 2015. Your device must also support Bluetooth 4.0, and for Apple users, this excludes the iPhone 6 and older versions of Apple's handset. If you're in England and Wales, then you will need the NHS COVID-19 app. Those in Scotland should get the NHS Scotland app. And for Northern Ireland, it's the HSC app. Now, these apps have more than built-in contact tracing. And it's worth a side note here that everyone's very careful to say contact tracing, not tracking. Interesting. Once the app is installed, it will ask for Bluetooth access and then for your postcode. I'll be dealing with the general security and privacy of this as we go along, but for now, let's have a look at how it works in general. It's all based on a point scoring system. When two devices running the app are close to each other, they exchange Bluetooth beacons to determine the duration and distance between each other in blocks of five minutes. Now, these measurements aren't always entirely accurate, but things are being tweaked and algorithms are being tweaked to make them more accurate. But these logs are used to create a cumulative point system with a set of interactions over people over a day. I've got a graphic on the screen now, which should hopefully explain it a lot more than what I'm trying to do. If the points threshold is met and someone shares a positive coronavirus result via the app, then the other person who you've been around will also receive an alert via their app. If you get an alert, you'll be told to go into self-isolation for 14 days, and this also triggers the start of the app's countdown clock. Now, importantly, you aren't told who triggered the alert. But most importantly, authorities cannot identify either party although they can monitor how many people have been told to self-isolate. When you've had an alert, even if you don't have any symptoms or you have a negative COVID test result, you must stay at home. I said very Boris-like doing that then. In England and Wales, you can be fined for breaching self-isolation laws, but because this app lets people remain completely anonymous, this isn't an issue. But please, if you've received alert, stay at home. Right, so let's get on and be a bit more technical. The information exchanged via beacons is a non-identifiable key, basically a string of random numbers that aren't tied to users' identity and change between every 10 to 20 minutes for additional protection. The log that I just mentioned a few moments ago is stored exclusively on your device. The only data that is shared is if you choose to share a COVID diagnosis with the health authority and then they will only get your random keys over the last 14 days. Again, no personifiably identifiable information is shared. Try saying that a few times. This is like the fifth take for this. Now, other devices will download the random keys from the health service at least once a day. And this data is processed on your device. There is no matching. Matches found between keys, you will get an exposure notification which is also just processed using your device. Again, it's all happening on your device, which is why we have the whole kerfuffle about privacy in the NHS. Now, I've actually linked to a whole host of things down below. It took me ages to find it. So if you want to know more and go more in depth, then please read that. What about going out? Well, at the time of this video, cafes, restaurants, bars, and other leisure facilities are all being told to close by 10 p.m., but it doesn't mean that you can't go out. Upon entering a building, you should be able to scan an authorised uh, QR barcode, and then the venue will be added to the app's digital diary of places you have recently visited. If the venue should be judged to be the centre of an outbreak by a local health authority, then they can trigger a notification to people who were there at the time. Again, there's no way to track you what with the random identifiers being used and changed every 15 minutes. Okay, what about postcode tracking? As I said earlier, when you first run the app, it does ask for your postcode, and this is so the NHS local authorities 
can collect statistics in that particular area. But again, it's all random information coming from your phone. You can then see the risk level area for that particular area. Or if you're planning to go on a journey or go somewhere else, you can see the risk level of your destination ahead of time. OK, so what about battery life and your data allowance? Now, details here are a little bit sketchy. Reports and apparently the developers are saying it shouldn't use anything more than 5% of your battery life over a day. Now, this needs the Bluetooth low energy general discoverable, discoverable mode. This is the fifth take. I'm not doing this one again, which is only available in Bluetooth 4 and above. Now, if your device does have a low power mode, then you ideally want to go into settings and exclude this app from low power mode. Now, again, I haven't been able to get a verification on this, or I, although I have tried to send out a tweet, that's going to get a reply, I'm sure. But they are saying that the major data carriers aren't going to count the notification data against your data allowance. If I find out anything more, I will add it to the end of this video. Let's round things off with security. As we know, your phone is going to be sending a Bluetooth beacon to other devices around with the app installed, but your phone every 10 to 20 minutes creates a unique identifier which is stored exclusively on your device. OK, none of the apps use GPS or location data at all. That's a big, big no, no. Now, whilst exposure notifications do require Bluetooth to be enabled, it doesn't use Bluetooth to track your location and it's strictly used to detect proximity. And finally, Google and Apple will disable the exposure notification systems when it's no longer required. And that's it for this video. As always, I'd love to hear your comments down below. What's your thought on this app? What's your thoughts on its privacy? Will you be downloading it? And if not, why not? Again, I'd love to hear your comments down below and maybe just maybe you can give that like and subscribe bell a bit of a tickle with the old mouse or your finger there. And that does it for this video. Until next time, stay safe, be careful, and ta-da!